When you bring your child home for the first time, you want a baby monitor you can trust. When you choose Stork, you choose technology trusted to monitor 10 million babies in hospitals every year. Stork continuously tracks your baby's pulse rate, oxygen saturation, and temperature. Visit MassimoStork.com to learn more. Stork, a revolutionary baby monitor, is born. Stork is not a medical device. Read and understand all product labeling. Massimo data on file. Moms and dads, I bet you can relate to this email. Kirk, my son is just like the kids you described in your podcast. He comes home feeling defeated after school, feeling like he isn't smart. But I got him Crunch Labs, and he loves it. Building the new toy and watching Mark Rober makes him feel smart. And then he explains, talking a million miles a minute, like our kids do, all the cool science facts he's learned. It's like I get my real kid back when he's building his Crunch Labs toy. And that is exactly why I was so psyched when my niece first told me how her son loves Crunch Lab. Confession, this is the one sponsor I wanted more than any other because it's such a perfect fit for our kids. So go to crunchlabs.com slash calm and you'll see why. Crunch Labs is a STEM monthly subscription build box for kids. Your kids get a really fun toy in the mail every month. And what kid doesn't love that? And then they put it together by watching a step-by-step video from former NASA engineer Mark Rober, where he teaches all the cool physics that make the toy work. Mark's passion is helping kids think like engineers. And this helps your kids develop resilience and problem-solving skills while having a ton of fun. Get your kids something they will actually love, use, and look forward to getting all throughout the coming year. Build your child's confidence now. Visit crunchlabs.com slash calm and get your kids Crunch Labs today. So you may have a child who hits, who screams all the time, who has meltdowns, who has tantrums, who lashes out at siblings, lashes out at you, who shuts down, refuses to do work, any and all of those things. And so when you email us, we always get the headline of like, I'm at my wit's end. What do I do? We get a lot of them that just say, help. Some of them say like, my child screams all the time. And so we love those. And we love that you're engaging with us because it gives us an opportunity to reach out to you and and, and work with you personally. And so here's what I encourage you to do, though, is when when you start thinking about these issues, begin to go a deeper, one step further, or maybe many steps further, and think, what is the source of the frustration? What is the root of this? Because when people tell me like, well, my child is defiant, like, okay, I get it. Uh, 100% agree that the uh, outward behavior that your child is exhibiting is defiant. But my next question is, what's going on inside that is causing that outward behavior? Because there's usually a root to it, right? And so I've often uh, said that if I had to describe your kids with one word, it wouldn't be defiant, it wouldn't be uh, disrespectful, it would be frustrated. They're really frustrated kids. Because look, when you and I as adults are frustrated, what do we do? We get short with people, right? We're not always charitable toward other people. We get in a rush. We do things quickly. We, we lash out. We do the same thing. When we're hungry, we're often short and become kind of jerky. When we're tired, we do that. And so let's look at that today on this episode of the Calm Parenting Podcast. So welcome. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is Kirk Martin, founder of Celebrate Calm. You can find us at CelebrateCalm.com. If you need some help, reach out to us. Email our strong-willed son, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y, at CelebrateCalm.com. Casey, this is where we learned a lot of it from Casey. He struggled with all of this, and we had 1,500 kids come in our home who all struggled with these things. Everything that you're struggling with. And what we learned very early on was if we just reacted to the outward behavior with a consequence, nothing changed. If, though, we looked a little deeper and got to the source of the frustration or the anxiety, well, then the issues changed. And so think about, let's go through a little list, right? So when, I, so when I'm working either with a phone consultation or just an email from people, I start to go through a list of things. So let's start with just the most basic, which is what are the physical things going on? 
Is your child not sleeping well? Okay, if they're not sleeping well, let's put them in a sleeping bag. Let's uh, put some uh, work on the sensory issues of putting lots of things on them, covers, uh, a golden retriever is great too. Um, things to give them physical pressure while they sleep. We can work on white noise, letting them listen to music as they fall asleep, all kinds of things. Instead of um, rush, 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 go to bed, we can throw a blanket down on the living room floor earlier in the evening, turn down the lights, slow life down, and give that child an opportunity to vent and bring up all the stuff that they were thinking about from the day earlier in the evening so you can address it rather than waiting until bedtime, right? That's just one, that's just a, a couple ideas. That's something physical going on. It could be something like gut issues. Maybe inside their gut biome, there's something going on and they just kind of feel icky. Lots of your kids have anxiety. Well, if they have anxiety, that usually affects the stomach. And so they kind of feel uneasy all the time, or maybe they don't eat right. They don't get enough protein. Maybe they eat simple carbs all the time and it's bagels and breads and peanut butter and jelly and that mac and cheese and simple think simple carbs that feel good on the stomach. Well, if your gut isn't feeling good, if your stomach's not feeling well, then you don't feel well and you're a little bit on edge. And so when your brother's making a little noise that you don't like, instead of saying, hey, could you stop? because I, I don't feel well, a little kid or a big kid is going to lash out and hit him or yell at him, right? And so we're like, well, he's not being kind to his brother. Well, sure, he's not being kind to his brother, but just lecturing about being nice doesn't work if you don't get to the root of it. By the way, anxiety is a big one for your kids. I guarantee many of your kids who shut down, who are defiant, who refuse to do things, Right, it's an old Taekwondo example of like, hey, you want to go to Taekwondo? And, and they're like, no, my stomach's kind of upset. And we're like, no, we're going to go, we're going to go. And then they're like, I hate you, you're stupid, you can't make me. That's not a defiance issue. That's a pure anxiety issue. And if you address the underlying anxiety, because anxiety is caused by unknowns, things you can't control, you solve the anxiety, all the other stuff goes your way. I'm going to throw this one out there because I don't know if I've ever mentioned on a podcast, but... Pandas, it's an uh, autoimmune condition, P-A-N-D-A-S. Sometimes when I hear things, when I'm on a phone consultation, I'm like, hey, did your child struggle with a lot of like ear infections and throat infections when they were little? Because sometimes it can cause a condition, and you'll just have to look this up, pandas, and it will look like OCD issues. Well, if you're struggling with that, you're going to feel a little bit off, right? Sensory needs, this is a big one. Whenever I hear, oh, my child's biting, they're getting physical. They lash out. They hit. I go to, okay, what are the sensory needs? Is this a child who, who seeks physical pressure all the time? And invariably what you hear is, oh yeah, now that I think about it, my child has always loved trampolines and has always loved climbing into under things and climbs trees. And my child does, you know, he chews on things all the time. I'm like, okay. So there's his body is screaming out for physical pressure, and he's going to get that pressure one way or another. Human nature says when we want something done, we tend to do the simplest thing possible, and usually that's negative. So that's my example of the classroom is you get a little kid or an older kid who didn't get enough sensory pressure, some sensory exercise in the morning. By the way, that's why I love obstacle courses in the backyard or in the basement. And you wake your child up and say, hey, guess where I hid your breakfast? Bet you can't find it. Hit it out in the obstacle course. And your child has to go crawl under things and climb things and push against things outside because kids love, look, I don't want to be around people in the morning. Do you? So giving a child a challenge to find something outside in the obstacle course, which they naturally love and their body loves, that's a great way to start the morning. But that child who doesn't get any physical pressure in the morning shows up in the classroom, and there are three or four other boys in the back of the classroom. Well, guess what's happening? Rumble. They're going to roughhouse because his body is craving that physical pressure. And so a teacher will look at that and say, well, your child is being aggressive. Sure, that outward behavior is aggressive, but what do we see underneath? He's trying to meet some sensory needs. He's just doing it in an unhealthy way. So my job as a parent is to be a detective and say, oh, think about this. If I proactively 
meet those needs, those internal needs. By the way, I'm making note on this because I'm going to put this in our newsletter because this is a, 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 a really key point. Proactively meet internal needs. It will change the outward behavior. And that's what we're looking for, right? Now, sometimes kids act out because they're being manipulative and they're manipulating you or they get full of themselves. And so that requires a different response. Not like, you know, you're full of yourself. It's just like, hey, I know what you're doing right now. It's not going to work in my house. It's just not going to work. I know what you're up to. What I think you really want is some intensity. So I'll give you some positive intensity, right? It could be that maybe you're a pushover. And you're, too, and you're too gentle and too soft and too like that. And so your kids are, well, th- see, that requires a different response. And for you to learn how to be confident, calm, even, matter of fact, and be leader in the home. Or maybe they're doing things because they're getting back at that harsh parent that they have. Maybe the dad is kind of harsh and unforgiving, my way or the highway. So your child's acting up to get back at that parent. Okay, now that's, that's a different route. And so now we can work on what's our, how are we parenting? How are we leading, right? And see what I mean. Now, it could be that your child acts out in certain ways because they need intense engagement. So I'll often reply back to parents and say, think intensely. Your child isn't looking for your attention. They need intensity, but positive intensity, not negative. You know what? If you keep that up, you're going to, that's negative intensity. Positive intensity is, oh man, I love the way your brain works. And here's what you're looking for right now. Let's go do X. And I lead the child into an activity that meets those internal needs and really engages that child with some intensity, right? That will solve underlying problems. Boredom, I've talked about before. Many issues just come from your child is bored, whether in class or at home. And so what's going to happen? He's going to get up in class, walk around, talk to other people, get in trouble, or he's going to take it out on siblings to get a reaction. Well, there the solution is purposeful missions. But here are some big ones I want you to think about. Sometimes your kids act out, whatever you want to call it, misbehave because they feel different than or less than their siblings. Sometimes, right? If I don't feel if I don't feel good about myself, I'm gonna lash out at my sibling. That makes sense to me. Sometimes they feel frustrated at school. They feel stupid. Think about this, because many of your kids feel like an adult trapped in a child's world, right? Because they're better as adults. Imagine working a job that you're not really good at and getting negative feedback literally every day from your boss. And then when you share your frustration at night with your spouse, your spouse also gives you negative feedback. Well, honey, you know, if you would just apply yourself, you'd be angry, you'd be frustrated, and you would not like life. And you would make things very unpleasant in your home, especially if your spouse had a great job and kept getting promoted. So imagine your child is working a job, which they are at school, that they're not always really good at, even though they're very um, intelligent and bright, they're not always academically motivated, and they get negative feedback literally every day from, you get it from a boss, they get it from a teacher. And then when they come home and share that frustration, then you give them negative feedback. Well, you know, if you would just apply yourself, see, that's why they're angry and frustrated at times. And so let's focus on this this week. When your kids are struggling with something, begin going through a checklist, right? Is it something physical? Is it sleep? Is it gut issues? Is it something going on inside of them? Are they just not feeling well, right? Are they feeling off inside? Is it a sensory issue? Is it that you talk too much and you lecture too much and it's just irritating? Or is it that you're too permissive? Or maybe one of you is too harsh. Maybe it is that they're just manipulative. They don't want to do when they're full of themselves. And you have to deal with that in a calm, even manner, but a very confident manner to let them know, I know what's going on. Maybe they need positive intensity and they haven't gotten that because the only time they get intensity is when they do something wrong. Maybe they're bored or maybe they just don't feel that great about themselves and we have to build their confidence. Go through that checklist this week. 
and begin to think through those things. And I promise you, if you do those things, you can get to the root of the issue and change this. Because think about it. And remember that anxiety part. If you give your child tools to succeed, to deal with their frustration, to deal with their anxiety, they will then become more confident knowing they have tools to handle life. If you build their confidence by using their gifts, talents, and passions, doing positive things, then they will feel good about themselves. A lot of these things will change. So if we can help you, that's why we want you to listen to the programs. Go through the Calm Parenting Package or the Get Everything Package. Listen because we get to the root of all of these issues, like that anxiety issue of not wanting to go to Taekwondo and they're lashing out, you're stupid, I hate you. The solution isn't, you know what, you better get your butt in the car, you're going to lose all your video games. The solution is understanding that the root of that is anxiety, which is caused by unknowns. So if I were to take my child three days ahead of time to the Taekwondo place and say, hey, Mr. Taekwondo, listen, my son's going to be in your class, loves helping other people. Could you give my child a job to do? And that Taekwondo guy says, oh man, I could so use your help. Listen, I want you here every week, five minutes early. When you get here, you're going to help me rearrange the mat, set up the, get set up for class. You up for that? Most of your kids are going to be like, oh, yes, sir, I'll do that. So next week or three days later, when I come home and say, hey, we've got Taekwondo, what triggers in your child's brain isn't all the scary unknowns of are we going to a new place? What if it's loud? What if the other kids pick on me? Because I don't get along with kids my own age. All those things, that's not what they're thinking about. What triggers in the brain is that guy said he needed my help and I'm good at helping other people. And he's going to say he wanted me to five, be there five minutes early. So we have to leave like 15, like three hours early, right? And so we just solved that issue. And so wherever you go, ask other adults, teachers, uh, assistant principal, someone at church, wherever you go, ask other adults to give your child a specific job to do because that makes them feel successful. That's what we're about. Hey, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.